Frank Motors authorized dealer of Tata Motors PV is now open and like Gorni Shillong, we are here to offer you India's most safest cars and to ensure you to get the most out of owning a Tata vehicle. Come on, Olive Culinary and Hospitality Management Shillong ka khot admission haki professional courses bapair bapair. Ya ka jingtiyo ka bak hamnya lecture ka city office 104 academy ha malki. Kayeng da prathaw an ka lakhlut shiphang ha ka kenta ka li ba juba. Ha ba uchif uweb ka liang persa uba George B. Lingdo ulawan raya ka jingali ha ka baiday bat ka kampen bait put bat ka jala asam. Uba George ula pinpaw ba ka jingpen bait put ha ka kala ka ba ar gam deishu ban long kumba la le ha ka kala ka ba ningkong. Kalem daya selok lang ya ki badan binta ba kentup ya ki teraya jaka bat ki nong sinshar shnong. Ka ba la pin long ru ban mi ki jing persa na ka jing do e ya ki jaka jong ki nong shong shnong. Halor ka teh ka jing kena jong ML A ka liang persa na ka liang umen teri rang ba ka jalau konrat ki sama ulo ong ba ka jing kena jong uba George ka de ka ba shutok. Bat ka ba ya lam bakla ya ka dor bar. Haka ba ulo ong ba u ML A ka liang persa u day ban kiar na kum ki teh ki jing kena ba ya lam bakla. Ukuan rat lo ong ba, haka jing penbeit ya upuut usam, haka kela ka ban ningkong, ka suarkar ka lak kentup ya barok ki badan benta, ba la penlong ru buun teli ki jialang, hendrai ki dang lapat ban don, ki bam hun ya ka jing penbeit put. Haka bai day ber ka jing keli ba la wan rat u MLA ka AITC, ukuan rat ulo ong ba ka jia keren na ka benta ban penbeit ya upuut bat ka asam, haka kela ka ba ar ka las dang. Bat haba jubab susu ba ya barok ki badan benta, ompat sem la ya selok menta. Hendrai katba ke jaya keren kandang yaj on siya selok ru bat barok na duk ki seng. Ki nong sensyar senong bat kumjuk ru ki district council. So reply to sa question number 3. Yes A, yes sir. B, sir the matter will be taken up into consideration by the state government. Honorable speaker sir. Yes ma'am. From the reply at 3A and B. It can be inferred that the government has gone ahead with the second round of talks for the settlement of the other six areas of differences with its counterpart in Assam. But the state government has not yet considered taking on board the stakeholders. So may I know why, sir, as to the government has not considered taking the stakeholders on board before the discussions were set on? Sir, so the discussion is a process. Uh, it's not an event of a single day. So therefore the process has started. And as the process moves on, we will include, discuss, uh, we will invite stakeholders, we will have uh, public hearings, we'll have multiple meetings. So therefore so the process has started. It's not that we have concluded the discussion. Hence, as this process moves forward, all stakeholders, all different people, public in general, all of them will be consulted and only then we will move ahead with the discussion. I thank the Honourable Chief Minister for the reply, sir. Why I have raised this question is because in the first phase of the talks, all these things did not happen. And only after the conclusion of the MOU have the Himas and other stakeholders objected to the signing of the MOU and the areas that were given away to Assam by the state government, sir. So I hope, sir, that the Honourable Chief Minister will stick to this particular process that he has already narrated. Because whatever we saw in phase one was never the way in which the Honourable Chief Minister had stated, sir. Sir, it's uh, sad that the Honourable Member is misleading the House completely. And uh, I can completely say that it's a lie, what he's saying, sir. In fact, uh, the process of the first phase saw multiple stakeholder meetings. For the first time, the ministers and the concerned officials went to ground zero, had multiple public hearings which are on record, not only with just Meghalaya, but even Assam was with us. So, sir, I would ask the honorable member to refrain for making such statements which are completely misleading. You're in the house. This is not a press conference that is going on. So be clear about your facts. This is not the way a responsible member should act, sir. In regards to the different members and the stakeholders we've talked to, every single stakeholder has been involved in this process, sir. I cannot say that every individual in the state has been involved, but the concern of the members was saying about the HEMAs, so the HEMAS, the discussion took place in all the relevant areas where it was. 
district council, MDCs, all of them were there when these discussions were taking place. Different MLAs, different NGOs, different uh, you know, stakeholders, you name it, sir. I don't have the whole list with me right now because the question was primary regarding the second phase. So I don't have the details of the first phase, uh, of the de you know, but I'm sure we'll get an opportunity and I will share all those details of how many meetings took place and who all and how many people were involved in this. So I would ref ask the honorable member to refrain from misguiding and misleading the house, sir. Honorable speaker, sir, the rules and procedures of conduct of this house tells us that we cannot cast personal aspersions on honorable members. It is expected that the leader of the house refrains from using the word lies and tells the members that we are lying. Sir, I am talking and some members are trying to add fire to this, add fuel to this entire discussion. Sir, the Khasil District Autonomous Council had only passed a resolution in the House opposing the MOU. We have letters from Hima Malim opposing the MOU. We have people who are up in arms saying that they don't want to go to Assam. Sir, calling me a liar, it's okay. It's for the people to judge whether I lie or not. I don't want to diverge or diverge, uh, go away from the reply that the Honorable Shimata has said. That the government will still be considering the stakeholders. It will still be thinking. So when we are so moving question, into, into this, sir, interrupting an Honorable Member also is not part of the rule, sir. So therefore, sir. So this is question hours, sir. My sir, point is that. I think we not be reminded of what is question hour and zero hour. You need to be reminded. So why is the Honorable Chief Minister annoyed? Why is the Chief Minister annoyed? Sir, so calling, uh, calling me sir, a liar I, I would request sir, instance, I, as, as a, as a uh, calling me a liar in the first this, instance. This for a sir, question. The sir, honorable I'm member, the point, I'm getting sir, and I will give a very detailed reply to him. Honorable Chief Minister, to but ask him to patients. please give a special question, sir. This, sir, please put a question. Supplementary. I'm coming to that, sir, because as questions were cast, and I don't remember this is a liar. question. Hour, so I need so to please put a question. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, sir, I would request the government that at least last time we had asked for the draft MOU on the floor of the house to be circulated, that was not done, and many areas have been lost. Mm -hmm. So at least this time, sir, second round, at least take us as a house into consideration and at least circulate the areas first so that at least we can have a thorough discussion and see the ground realities before the government goes ahead with the second round and finalizes the other MOU, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, the honorable member has been mixing a lot of words and trying to bring out emotions into this entire thing. I understand it is an emotional subject, there's no doubt about it. But the fact is, why I said he's misleading the House and lying about it, is because he said that the stakeholders were not consulted. That is wrong, sir. We consulted the sir, stakeholders. Letters were there, sir, sir. I'm, I'm letters were there, sir. That's please, why. Please, please. Sir, I think the honorable member needs to, again, do his homework. He has to understand that not agreeing to a discussion and giving a letter of, you know, uh, discontentment does not mean discussion didn't take place. Because sir, discussion if the discussion place, had been there, why would there please, be please, discontentment? Please. <clears throat> sir, when we talk, is it always necessary that everything will go on as we agree or, or both all agree? It may not go. But does that mean we never talked? So for him to jump to a conclusion that because there was discontentment, we didn't talk, that is where I'm saying he's misleading the house. Your point may be valid, that somebody was not contented or not happy with the MOU and they have a right to write to it. But does that mean or does that you know, imply that discussion didn't play, take place? Sir, that does sir, mean, that replying, means sir, that there is a neutral discussion. Sir, I'm replying. Sir, I'm replying. Sir, I'm replying. That means this discussion no, no, was not necessary at all, sir. Then you just go ahead and decide no, and take, give away the areas. Please. Sir, now Honourable Member is exactly saying what he said should not be done. Sir, we have maintained that we discuss with everybody. That's how discussions... Sir, a complicated subject like that cannot be moved forward without this detailed discussion. That's number one. And that's why we did it. 
And what I'm saying is that the honorable member saying that we didn't discuss is misleading the House and that's incorrect, sir. Number two part, he's saying that then why didn't we agree and why is the discontentment letter? So there will be. A complicated subject like this cannot have every single person agreeing to every single decision and that's why government has to take a decision. It's not easy for us. But a lot of past governments have not taken this decision. We feel that it is time, 50 years have gone and we took that decision. Now I'm not saying that everybody agreed to it, so discontentment may be there. And that's what the uh, KGDC or the other uh, Himas might have written, that's fine. But saying that we didn't consult them is the part that I'm saying that you're misleading. We did consult them. They, just, they did not agree to it, that's a different issue. We may talk and argue for 100 years and we may not disagree. We may not agree, sorry. But that's how things go, discussion happens. But I'm saying, sir, that the, the discussion took place. All the stakeholders were consulted. Many, many rounds of discussion took place. And similarly, even in this second phase also, which is again a very, very complicated area, we will again have discussions with the stakeholders. And again, we might not have everybody agreeing to everything. But that's the nature of discussion and that's the reason why solutions could not come out in the past because there were a lot of divergent views. And the only way to bring consensus is to try to talk and try to figure out and then ultimately move ahead with what is in the best overall interest which may not be agreeable to everybody, but in the larger interest in the, of the state and the people, we have gone ahead, sir. And in the same way, manner, this phase also, we will have discussions. So, therefore, sir, the last. <clears throat> sir, I thank the Honorable Chief Minister for this clarification. But the fact is, as I had said, the ground realities talk differently. If fish ponds are being inspected in the middle of the night, if people were trying to show concerns and raise voice or maybe during the public hearings they were trying to show their points they were shouted down by the minister from Assam side do we call this discussion sir do we call such things as discussion and taking stakeholders on board when people on the ground are saying that they have come ins to inspect things at the middle of the night and who are those people who have been called for the public hearings sir where there are, are people from the question. state Please so the therefore question. sir the process as the Honorable Chief Minister stated, needs to be reviewed because all the anomalies that had happened in phase one, sir, we don't want that to happen in phase two, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think the Honorable Member has spoken in favor of the government because he said that, you know, the meetings took place even in the night. So that's sir, what I'm saying, sir. If yeah. these are the yeah. kind of discussions. So, so, so what I'm trying to say, sir, this is how hard the members were working, that they even went to the late night it's not about they didn't get tired, they were committed to the cause and that's why even late night they were visiting. But the honourable member fails to mention that it wasn't that just one visit, there were six, seven, eight visits before that also to the same location. So therefore, I think he's just uh, certifying the fact that the government has done a lot of hard work, even late night meetings took place, sir. So therefore, it's not just that one meeting, sir. He mentioned about that one meeting that happened to be late night, but that's because the area is big, complicated, we had to move on, multiple meetings took place. He's mentioning about that one meeting, but before that many meetings took place, sir, for that uh, area also. Number two, sir, I also would request, so this is important, why? Because I know a lot of members would like to participate in this. This is a sensitive issue. I don't want anybody to play politics in this. This is not an issue to play politics. Please remember that. If we are trying to play politics with this, then we are going against the interest of our own people. Please refrain from playing politics. Please give positive suggestions. We are here to work for our people. We are here to resolve an issue that has been lying pending for the last 50 years. You have not seen the tears in the eyes of the people who come and meet us, crying and telling us, please resolve this issue. We can't sleep at night. Sir, I need the members of this house to feel that, to understand that. That this is not a simple issue. And we are responsible to our people. And the worst thing we can do is play politics on an issue like this. Now, sir, why I'm saying this is because a large number of members I know will mention this issue again. It's very easy to say, oh, we have left that village out. Let's be specific. Please don't give generic statements, is my request, sir, through you, that if the honorable members, when they say villages were left out, please mention which village. You know, there were differences in the area. Please, which area of the difference was there? It's a large area, sir with many, many villages and large population. If we give generic statements here in this house, then we'll keep going round and round and round in discussion and we will not reach to any conclusion. But yes, if there are areas that 
will help us, so there are suggestions that will help us to make the things better and resolve the situation in a much better manner for the people. So we are ready, we are ready to listen. But not if it is being done from the point of playing politics. So therefore, I'm not saying that people will play politics, but if you are making statements which are generic, like somebody will come in, I mean, honorable member just mentioned, sir, that villages were left out, you know, and people are in arms. Let us hear the names of the villages where people are up in arms. What is the problem out there? Let's discuss that and let's figure out how to resolve that issue. So let's be specific and just, uh, you know, raising up a generic tone in this thing will not help the process. And this is why, sir, in the past this issue has not been resolved simply because we were always very generic. But when you realize that we come down to micro details, we realize that there were some villages which were never under dispute. Then we realized in some villages people are agreeable to a solution. And then we realized that there are 20%, 15% where there is a genuine difference in the, in the people's opinion. So it is very important that we break this huge problem into micro problems. That's the only way to resolve it, sir. And when we break them down into smaller, smaller, smaller problems, then we are able to resolve it and find a solution and focus on the ones which we are not able to agree on. So my request, sir, will be that let us be specific, let us be productive. This is the best you know, platform and the highest platform to discuss an issue like this. My only request, sir, is that we should not play politics in this. We should try and resolve this issue in the interest of the people and the state as a whole, sir. sir. Honourable member, I would last. like to request the House that in, in, during the question hour, kindly be specific and very short because sir. other members have raised the question, so, so I will sir, have to this is a very make important, an attempt. Sir, this and is we a have, very important point. Please take, sir, the, please, please take a seat. Please take a seat. We have the thing in the resolution also with regards to the boundary. So you may take up and raise your points there also. So it will not be a waste of time during the question hour. Sir, this matter was dragged because unnecessarily the Honourable Chief Minister was getting yeah, emotional. Yeah, we put a question now. Just put a question. My you may raise whatever points in the resolution uh, where it's li been listed. During Sir, this my question. question is whether <clears throat> the stakeholders, considering the members of this Honourable, of this House, sir, whether they will be considered before the other discussions go ahead with the, the balancing areas of differences? Sir, I've already replied. Uh, the answer is affirmative. Yes, sir. We will be discussing with everybody. Yeah.